Swimming is very unique because the feedback that you get from your closest rivals, your opponents, your competitors, is very minimal. You're not unable to see them. You can't hear them. Unlike any other sport, you're alone. There is almost a tunnel vision to this environment, unique to this sport, unlike any other sport at the Olympic Games. With aquatics, we really do have to try and propel our body through a fluid medium, in this case water, as quickly as we possibly can. So if we can maximise the force and minimise the drag, we should end up with a pretty efficient swimming action. The water entry is going to be very important. We need to generate a large amount of force off the blocks. So we use the large muscles of the legs, of the gluteals, to extend powerfully against the blocks and try and fly through the air as quickly as we possibly can. We're looking to maximise the distance that we can glide for under the water then before the first stroke is going to be taken. Swimmers' physiques tend to have quite wide shoulders, also have extra well-developed pectorals. In addition, muscle-wise, we see big latissimus dorsi. Latissimus are the muscles kind of in your back. It's almost what we call the wings, so to say. And we notice that swimmers, as they're doing the crawl and pulling through the water, they're always resisting extension. That resistance that the water provides is actually something we call isokinetic. So the water gives an accommodating resistance. The faster you push in the water, the more resistance it gives you. So they have to know how to modulate their technique to either increase or decrease drag or increase or decrease resistance. And all that is directly related to performance. Swimmers are, are wonderful athletes to work with because they need to do a lot of training and from a very early age to be able to develop the, the speed and the technique to be truly elite. They need to have plenty of fuel to be able to get through the double sessions they do in a day. And what they need to eat will change depending on whether they're doing sprint sessions or longer sessions, if they're doing gym work and have resistance training where they might need some more recovery around the, the protein. It's generally about modulating carbohydrate to meet the fuel needs of that particular day and that particular program. And that changes over the year as athletes get closer to their competition, they'll taper their training, and we need to help them to reduce the total amount of energy and the total amount of carbohydrate they're eating. Physical training and strength and conditioning for swimmers, first off, we don't wanna to do too many repetitive exercises that we know they're doing. We don't need to enhance the swimming stroke in the gym. What we try to do in the gym is have a balance. We work on core work. We work on flexibility. We work on mental training, we work on balance, things like that that are not directly related to swimming but we know have a crossover. Try to do exercises that are working not the sagittal muscles or the muscles in one plane, but multiplanar muscles. So we have them doing Pilates sometimes. We have them doing martial arts, yoga, really other exercises, stimulating different muscles in different pathways, and that helps recovery and keeps them fresh when they go back into the water. 